When you listen to me, a native English speaker, speak English, you can understand lots, right? But when you want to speak out, you can't always speak fluently. Why? What's going on? Let's find out. I feel for you. No, I do really, really. You can listen to English and understand lots. You can read stuff and understand lots. But when it comes to speaking, you can't find the right words. Your mind goes blank. It's like the words in your head are beautiful, but the words that come out are not so beautiful. <laughs> and you might feel that you've been stuck in this situation like for a long time. I do feel for you, really. I know, I've been there. As a learner of French, Spanish and Chinese, I've been exactly where you are. And I'll tell you right now, the biggest reason this happens is pressure. You see, listening and reading are passive. You just sit back, take your time. Speaking is real time. People are listening, there are expectations, there is pressure. And most people, it's uh, 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 <laughs> that's what happens, of course, with the pressure. But listen, having taught students, over 40,000 students worldwide with my online courses, I am sure I can help you. By the way, my name is Keith. Um, I run the YouTube channel English Speaking Success and the website, the Keith Speaking Academy, where I have my online courses to help students develop their speaking skills in a fun and professional way. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the six main reasons you may not be advancing or progressing as much as you want with your speaking fluency and what you can do about it. At the end of the video, I'll also give you some tips on how to handle that real-time pressure when speaking. Okay, sound good? Number one, you're trying too hard to impress. And very often that means that you speak quickly. You see, when you speak English, there's going to be people watching you, waiting, expecting. And it's like you're revealing yourself. You're showing a part of your personality, your identity. It's terrifying, right? And people will judge you. Whether it's right or wrong, they will judge not only your English, but a lot more about you. So what we need to do is to ignore the judgment. But I think one of the most important things is, is not to speak too quickly, especially with native speakers and an IELTS examiner. They will speak quickly. And we often feel as students, oh, well, I have to speak quickly too. So I'm going to try to keep up and speak really fast. And when you speak quickly, you lose control. And normally it's like when you're running like a baby starting to walk and run, boom, and they tumble and they fall. The thing to do is to slow down. Speak at your own pace. You can speak slowly and fluently. Really, you can. Slow down, speak at your own pace. And forget about everybody. <laughs> Number two. Number two, you are making things overcomplicated. And this is particularly true of IELTS speaking students. They're trying to show off some fancy vocabulary, speak out these long, complex grammatical structures. But because you're thinking so much about that, when you speak, the words are coming out with hesitation, with pauses. There's no connection. Doesn't make sense. The listener gets confused. The thing to do is to keep it simple especially when you begin speaking. Forget the fancy vocab, forget the complexity, keep it simple. Build up and as you warm up and you're walking more quickly, then you can maybe run a little bit, but at the start, keep it simple. Number three, you're focusing on accuracy. And this is because you want to speak correctly. You don't want to make mistakes. You want to speak correctly, maybe perfectly, 
But that means that often when you're speaking, you're thinking, is it the right tense? Is it with an S, without an S? And therefore, as you're thinking, you're not speaking, there are gaps in your speech, loss of coherence, and your fluency starts to fall because you're focusing too much on accuracy. The truth is you need a balance of accuracy and fluency. You need both. You want to focus on communicating your idea, but have a good balance. Sometimes it's fluency, sometimes it's accuracy. Build them both up over time. Don't just be accurate and have no fluency. That's it. Let's move on. Right, number four, you lack vocabulary. This is one of the biggest problems to speak in fluency students not having the words um, in order to express their idea. And it means you lose fluency, right? I mean, you know, you're, you're thinking of a particular item. You say, oh, I, I want one of those things. It's, it's a tool. It, it's what I need for my car to, you know, what one of those things, what, what do you call it? And, and you see how your fluency falls because you're lacking these words. Yes, you can paraphrase and find a way around, but only sometimes. Overall, if you don't have the vocabulary, especially at intermediate and above levels, you're going to struggle. Vocabulary begins very, very, very tangible. It's about very simple things. But as you get to a higher level, you're expressing more abstract ideas, more intangible things, um, concepts. And that's harder. You need more nuanced vocabulary. So the thing to do here is you need to think long term about your English and building your vocabulary. Think like test cricket, right? Test cricket, you play a game over five days. Now, when I talk to Americans about cricket and a game that lasts for five days, they're like, what? That's long term. It's the same when you're building your vocabulary, right? You want to be building your vocabulary over time slowly. And as your vocabulary gets better and better and better, your fluency will get better over time. What you don't do is suddenly try to learn lots of vocabulary above your level. Boom, because your fluency will drop because of what I said before about overcomplicating things. When you're speaking, a lot of the time when you're practicing, use vocabulary just below your level. Words you're comfortable with, confident with, you know the meaning and can express. And you'll be speaking more fluently. Of course, in the background, over time, you're building up all of that vocabulary. So you're slowly raising your game. Not cricket, English. Over time. That's the way to do it. You are shy. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But for a lot of introverted people, we, I say we because I am introverted, often let our shyness affect our fluency. It doesn't have to, but sometimes it does because it means that you mumble. I'm going to do that. You know what I mean? Right? Not speaking clearly. Uh, sometimes your body language falls down and you lack confidence. And this can affect your fluency directly. The thing to know, and I talked about this in a recent video about being a confident speaker of English, is that you can be shy and confident. And you can use, you can even use your shyness to build your confidence. Um, be a strong, confident speaker. And then when you're not mumbling, you're speaking clearly, loudly, with a body posture to communicate, then you can speak more fluently. It takes time, it takes a practice, but most of all, it takes awareness of this. If you are shy, if you're extrovert, you probably don't have this problem. Let's move on to the last one. Number six, you don't practice enough. Now, when I say practice, I don't mean practice speaking. Although, yes, you need to practice speaking lots and lots. I mean, you don't practice fluency enough. Practice fluency? What do you mean? 
I mean is to practice speaking your sentences and your ideas again and again and again. What most people do, of course, in a conversation is you get your idea across and then carry on. You move on to the next idea. Of course, when you're on your own, though, practicing alone at home, I recommend you don't just say the idea once, but practice saying it again and again. And this is great for IELTS speaking, repeating your sentences again and again. Um, and you're practicing the fluency. You're just getting the idea and practicing saying it more fluently. The other thing to do is to notice and learn phrasing and intonation. Phrasing is where the native English speaker pauses in their speech. Okay. And the intonation, so each phrase has an intonation pattern. There are no fixed rules for this, but there are patterns you can follow. Uh, for example, take this simple sentence, right? If I could speak fluently, I would pass my test. The phrasing here is I stop after fluently. If I could speak fluently, pause, I would pass my test. That's how a native speaker would normally, not always, but normally naturally phrase that sentence. And the intonation, especially with these if sentences, is d d d d d d d d. If I could speak fluently, I would pass my test. Okay, so that pattern is a common pattern. And if you can pick up these patterns and learn them and notice them, a great place to do this is interviews. Interviews of famous people, actors, etc. on TV, you'll start noticing this. If you want to do it systematically, this is what my Fluent Grammar for IELTS Speaking course does. Basically, it takes all of these grammatical structures, breaks them into phrases, where as a native speaker, we would break down the phrasing and shows you the intonation. And you just repeat and practice. And that really practices your fluency. It's a bit like shadowing on steroids. It's a really great way to do it. And that practicing fluency, funnily enough, makes you more fluent. Right, good. So there you go. Now you know the six main reasons why you're not speaking fluently. Remember what I said though at the start, knowing is not enough. If you want to change, you need to do something now. So have a think about what you're going to do differently. Oh, and do you remember at the start of the video, I talked about pressure. One of the biggest problems of speaking fluently is that people go blank because there's the real-time pressure, the expectation, people watching you. So there are lots of things you can do with that. I'm just going to give you one tip today on how to handle that pressure so you can speak more relaxed and more fluently. And it's the following, is breathe, smile, and make eye contact. Breathe, because that physiologically is going to help relax your body. Smile, because that will help you relax and it will help other people relax. And when they relax, you'll relax. And it's a virtuous cycle. Everybody's relaxed. And the eye contact will just help, again, make you relaxed and other people relax. It's a good communication technique. Okay. So breathe, smile, and make eye contact. If I could speak more fluently, I would pass my test. That's it. I hope with this video, you will be able to speak more fluently in the coming weeks as you take action and practice more. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, um, turn on the notifications, subscribe as well to the channel so you can find out about upcoming videos as well. Leave me a comment. Tell me which of these tips you enjoyed or liked today. And that's it. I will see you next time in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.